Welcome to section four, using arrays. So to just briefly go over what an array is, an array is simply just a list of data. Basically, you can think of it as a group of data. So if I have five numbers and say, five, 10, 15, and 20, and 25, we have all these numbers and we need to store them in memory somehow. Well, up till now, we can either create five separate variables. So I can say number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. And I can store these values into those separate variables. And now I have them all stored in memory. So that's one way you can do it. But basically an array takes that and now I can store a large piece of data all together in this one entity. So I can store all those five numbers into one entity called an array and it can hold all five numbers. Now you may be saying, okay, why do I want to do that? Well, think about it this way. Let's say we were building some kind of program for maybe a teacher. And this program kept track of all their students' grades. Let's say they have 30 students in their class right now. And each, they need to keep track of their final grade. So whatever their GPA is maybe, or their, their, all their test scores, the average, whatever it is, it's keeping track of all the students' grades. So up until now, in order to do that, we, we would have to create a separate variable for every student. So we have students 1 to 30, all these integer variables or doubles or whatever we want to make them. We have a long list of doubles. And every single time a student gets a new grade or whatever, we have to recalculate it and reset that variable. So we have this long list of 30 variables. Now, we develop the program. We're done. We, we publish it. And now the teacher's using it. So they're using it. And then a week goes by and there's a problem. The problem is another student gets added to the class. So now there are 31 students. But our program that we just designed is only designed to handle 30 students because we made 30 separate variables to handle it. So what do we do in that case? We're kind of in a bad situation. We, we either have to remake the program by adding another student variable in, adding that into all the calculations and everything like that, republishing it and re-pushing it to the clients. Um, but that's not a good thing because there's, there's so much work involved in doing that just because one student joined the class. And what happens when another join, a student joins the class and all those things. So basically, the array and other data structures like the array are the answer to this. An array is a type of structure that can hold many pieces of data. So, for example, if we have 30 students, I'll just say, okay, make 30 integers inside of this array because an array is a group of integers or it's a group of some kind of data. An array, by definition, is a group of some kind of data of the same data type. So let's say we have 50 integers. I can make an array that holds 50 integers. But later down the road, if I need 51 integers, I can just simply change it to 51 integers without remaking the whole program. And now everything works with 51 integers. So an array is a group of data of the same data type. Now, the cool thing that arrays, you know, why it's so powerful is because when arrays are used with loops, you can do anything you want. Because when we have that program with those separate variables, we have 30 separate variables and we need to manage them all. We need to actually type in the name of every single variable every time we want to change something, if we want to add something to it, whatever we want to do, we have to keep on typing in the name of the variable. But with arrays, there's this special syntax set up where we can use a loop to basically basically manipulate the entire data set. So hundreds of numbers if you want. It can manipulate them all instantaneously. You can modify them all at the same time, do whatever you want very easily with just one statement of code. So that's the power of, power of arrays and that's what we're going to actually look into this entire section. We're looking at how we can use them, how do we create them, when do we use them, and situations like that.